Guys, what's up? It's Andy Elliott. What you're about to watch is called The Day in a Life. Now, we're in the lion's den right now, and you're about to get footage of what a live event looks like with me. This event specifically is called the Master Closer Seminar. You know, I love sales, I love leadership, I love life coaching. Dude, I love watching people transform and totally recreate. Now at this event, some of the stuff you're about to see is how I run my team, how I build my army. It's not even all gonna be about me, which is important for you, so you can see how I operate, who I run with, and who I surround myself with. I'm sure you guys know who Tony Robbins is, right? So in this event, Tony Robbins, CEO, Dean Graciosi is gonna be speaking. You're gonna see a clip of that. Steve Weatherford, he's an NFL football player, Super Bowl ring, savage. He's here with me as well. This guy's on fire for God, he's unreal. Now you may say, Andy, you know like, is this church? Dude, God's number one in my life. Everything that I do is about getting it all, being close to God, being physically fit, being a great husband, being a great dad, being a great leader to my team, looking in the mirror and being proud of myself, putting a, uh, a financial fence around my family and you know economically being okay. Like all of that, I know it's important to you too. During this video, you're gonna get so many gold nuggets, right? And the cool thing is, it's not me training the camera directly, it's all really how we're living. So I love you guys, check it out, I hope you enjoy it. I guarantee it's gonna change your life. I feel like it's important, I feel like a lot of people, they get casual. Dude, listen, when you're not stirred up and you're not pissed off about something, you're not gonna play your best. Now, we're out here in Arizona, some of you right now, you're like, it's hot. Dude, this isn't hot, dude. Okay, this is winter. I'm gonna explain this to you. This first part of what we do at the Master Closer Seminar, and if you'll notice, there'll be 500 people in here tomorrow. Only a third of them will be out here today. The other two thirds don't think that this is important or they didn't make time for it. And they're like, yeah, you know, I work out at the gym myself. We'll see if what they did today was worth missing this. I promise you, we don't do this because we wanna get you out here sweating. We want you to come out here and reprove to yourself that you really want what you say you want. Okay, this is between you and you today, and I want you to understand this. Every one of you are a leader. The Elliott Army, Patrick Bet David is a good mentor of mine. He's building a giant following, and I explain this very clearly. You're building PBD Army, Patrick Bet David Army. I'm building Elliott Army, and we are in an alliance. Where you go, I'll go. Where you're going to war, I'm going to war. If you're gonna take that village, I'm going with you. We're gonna build a giant gang together. So whatever team you are a part of when you're here, we are all one team. There, it's not a job. Everybody here who's like, well, that's my job. I'm sorry that you have a job. I, I don't want one. I'm not after one, I'm after a life. Yes. You guys will do life with us. Amen. I don't care who pays you. I don't care what happens. You're a part of the Elliott Army gang. Also, all the other companies that I partner with that are badasses, you're also a part of those places. We are going to take over the world and build an army. But I'm going to explain this to you one time. We're going to have to be fit. We're going to have to be fit, man. In a world full of people right now that are lazy, make bad decisions, sloppy, can't be disciplined, don't give a f I'm out. I'm out. Today, I don't care where you're at along those lines, today you're gonna decide to level up. I'm not calling you out, I'm calling you up today to say Ali, who's amazing, runs our fitness division, Ali is going to be running a workout today. This is between you and you beating the quitting mind. Some of you out here, listen to me. I want you to look around when you're giving all you got and I want you to be an example for somebody else what it looks like when you're going through pain, when you want to stop, when everything's burning, how you'll say that, you know what, I'm not going to quit today. If you roll it, I pray you don't get cold. Is it ready for all my brother? Is it ready for all my brother? Beckon it, beckon up. How are you? What color is my tongue? Uh, it's pink. Normal? Yeah, it's normal. I'm healthy. <laughs> Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. 
You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Hey, who did the workout this morning? Raise your hand. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Hey, so number one, I want to. I'm gonna do a couple of things with you guys tonight. Just kind of set the tone for tomorrow, because tomorrow is where the teaching is gonna get done. But I want to tell you this: if if you're in this room, it's because you want more. Okay, and, and I want to tell you something. There's two things you need to know. In order, if you want more, you got to have a higher level of accountability. Yeah, we do. I'm just telling you, you got to have a higher, people like, do listen, I know human beings that hate pain, they hate suffering, pain. they hate, listen, they hate responsibility, and they hate accountability. They hate it, am I right? Yeah. Everybody's like, no, I don't. Come on, man. That's what they hate. But the only way to get what the average person, like the opposite of what they're getting, look, you guys got to choose something, Okay. I always ask people, people, they say, are you a cult? Yes. Yes. No. Choose your cult. Choose it. Choose your team. What color jersey you want to play? Red or black? Choose. What cult do you want to do? The one that brainwashes himself every day? That there's more, they're capable, that they need to reach for more? Or the one that thinks they're capped out, they're maxed out, and life's tough? Like, you got to decide. Like, guys, it, it is a cult. It is. And so I am a cult leader. And I decided that I ran with the wrong cult for a very long time. I did. Somebody's going to clip this. Yeah, yeah, and I wanted to clip it. They'll clip everything in your life. And I wish they would clip you saying, hey, I brainwash people to believe in themselves. Wow, what a bad cult. I can't believe that. They want everybody to make a lot of money, get jacked, be good to people, do the right shit. That sounds awful. That sounds horrible. I can't believe it. But, but the deal is, is that we choose in this room. We're choosing all of us together to push ourselves to another level. That's why you're here. Um, whether it's your first time here or you've been here a lot of times, I'm going to tell you this, you'll never outgrow us. You'll never outgrow us. Our, our heart keeps growing. Our skill keeps growing. Our team keeps growing. We, we don't do things like everyone else. So it's a little bit like if you're going to create a name for your family, you can't be, you got to go to war on mediocrity. You got to go to, more, uh, to war on average. And listen, when you're not playing the average game, people don't like it. And I want to I challenge you guys all. I, I talk about my wife a lot, okay? People don't like it, man. People are exhausted with it. They're fed up with it. As their family's divorcing, their kids are depressed, they're tearing their life apart, yet they're sitting there saying, man, screw this guy. I'm sick of this shit. They could change too, just like I changed. Okay, so my deal is, is that number one, I want to tell you guys, if you want to build something that no one else has ever built, I, I said in the beginning, who went to the workout this morning? Everybody raised their hand. A lot of you did. It, it was awesome. When I started my business in 2019, guys, there was no game plan. There was no coach. There was no nothing. I was, and I'm not running towards a life that I want. You guys understand this. There's two kind of people in this room. Some of you, you want something really bad. You're like, I just want to be successful. Okay, cool. You're running towards a life that you want. I get that. Dude, you don't want to compete against a person that's running from a life that they hate. Listen, some of you in here, this weekend, I want to stir you. And you see why I get angry and I get mad? It's not because I'm really mad. I'm loving. I'm just pissed off, man. You know, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Everybody told me I couldn't become nothing. I never had a good leader. I was living life wrong. And so I'm like, dude, I don't like me. And then finally, when I started doing what everyone told me not to do, I started to like me. Dude, you guys got to realize, man, if you, wanna, if you want a new business plan, a new map, a new way to do things, hey, maybe you're killing it in two areas, but three other areas that are important in your life and are priorities, you're not killing it. You're going to get the roadmap this weekend, but you're going to have to leave and do something different. So number one, me and, me and my wife, Jacqueline, and then the ento entire Elliott Army company, our goal was three years ago, four years ago, this, this didn't exist. 
Okay? Everybody told us it was going to take a while. It was going to take a long time. And uh, we just didn't believe that. And so, like, I need you to know today that my goal, and I'm going to go through everything today, but my goal is what would take you 10 years to get, I want you to get by the end of the year. I want you to understand that. Listen, the only person standing in the way of that is you. That's it. And so the greatest leaders, they're crazy. The greatest, yeah, they're extreme. They're, they're just, they're, 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 they're freaks of like believing that something's possible. And in the extremes is where you'll find excellence. And you'll learn today that you don't have to be great at a lot of things. You just find one really, one really thing that you want. You're like, man, I want to be great at that. And mine is leadership. And the greatest scarcest, the only reason I say scarcest, like it's scar- you can't find it. The scarcest resource in the world is leadership. It's missing in the communities, it's missing at homes, it's missing in companies. And if you want to make more money, if you're here because you're like, man, I want to make more money. Cool, I love that. Increase your value. How do you increase your value? Become a leader. Okay? And so this whole time today, there'll be so many little buckets of things that you're like, oh my God, I, that's like a breakthrough, a flash. The whole goal, this is it. One day, total immersion. That's it. You walked in here, you're here now. Okay? Give us your mind. Let me hijack your brain for just a day. Let me show you what a, a nine-figure mindset looks like, a nine-figure company, to build a team that like changes the world, changes people's lives, no matter where you've come from. Don't care. Doesn't matter. I don't care what you did. By the way, some of you in here, you're doing good in life. I'm going to give you some good news and bad news. Good news, if you're killing it right now, okay, or bad news, really. If you're killing it right now, you don't always get to keep that. Be very careful. If you're in here today and you're like, I'm doing all this. I'm doing good right now. Well, someone's coming for you. Someone's coming for you. Be very, very careful if you're making a lot of money and you got something today to think that no one wants what you have. Okay? So that's bad, that, that's bad news. Someone's coming for you. And then here's the good news. Is that if you don't have what you want today, you can get it. That's the beautiful part of it all. So I fight like hell every day to keep an edge and to stay on top of the world, stay on top of the game, and be a leader. And then every day, I'm constantly being open-minded enough to think, man, what is it that I need? What's my edge today? If I'm going to kill off this guy today and I'm going to be a new man tomorrow, what's that look like? Right? Like, so today, it's just about we're going to expose weaknesses. Do people hate to be exposed? Yeah. If I say, we're going to expose you, they're like, oh, no, don't expose us. No, do it. Do it, please. Please tell them everything I did so I can finally be free. Then I can grow. You know what we did in the Elliot group? Hey, listen to me. I told you you got to be extreme. You got to decide. Do you really want what you say you want? Guy out of all life I wasn't proud of. Guy, dude, listen to me. I was better than most, but I'm still disgusted with the old life I lived. And when we decided to build our business, we knew when we decided to go to a new level and become a new person and recreate our life that the old people in our old lives would say, you don't know who they are. We want to show you what they did. You don't know that guy. They wanted to expose us. So you know what we did? We exposed ourselves. What? So you took the gun and un, you pulled all the, I, I pulled all the bullets out of the enemy's gun right away. I said, almost went to jail. Betrayed everybody. Wasn't good to my wife. I was a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? I chased money my whole life. What, what else? What do you want to know? Whatever they say I did, it was 10 times worse. Whatever they said. I don't care. Even if it was a lie and they're exaggerating, they'll just do times 10 and say it was real. I ain't that dude no more. If you come meet me now, anybody right now, the good news is, is why you want to listen today is because when you change, they're going to try to expose you. They're not going to like it. They put boundaries and boxes on all of you, your marriages, your companies, your life, how you treat your children, what you did. Dude, they're going to try to hold who you used to be up here. Guess what? Expose yourself. Start telling your story. Man, I used to be disgusted with myself, and I ain't no more, man. Dude, hey, I can't believe you did that. Dude, if I would have met me back then, I would have hated me too. But come meet me now and walk away saying you hate me. Come meet me now. I've never, listen. This is crazy. This is how I know what I'm telling you is the truth. I, 
We, dude, guys, we get 100 million views on social media every 30 days. I get the biggest hate everywhere. I'm, look, you can imagine the hate. Hey, I ain't saying it ain't coming. I ain't never had someone walk up to my face and tell me they don't like my shit. The, 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 listen, the losers hide in the shadows. They don't, they, hey, I ain't an MMA fighter. They, they're just, they hate who they are. And so they're, they're sitting there, barstool warriors on the internet, typing away, and here you are changing your life, becoming a better person for your family. Man, you're not thinking about them. You're thinking about how many people's lives you can change if you can change. Listen, if a guy like me that's screwed up, that's lost, people are like, oh, I want to be just like you. I'm like, dude, listen to me. I, I get that. Dude, I had to become a new person, a thousand deaths to become this new man. A thousand deaths. And I'm going to get a thousand more to go to the next level. Okay, so you got to do that, but don't get hung up on who you used to be. The decisions you make today and moving forward are never based off the past anymore. You can use your pain, it'll teach you, right? But do we make decisions on who we're becoming now? Because that guy was a piece of shit, but I had to be that guy to be this guy today. And so whoever you guys are right now, I don't care, whatever your hole is in life, guess what? You had to go through that. You've done something that you're in really shame about. Dude, listen to me. You had to go through that, and when you can overcome that, now you're immensely qualified to help someone else overcome it. Some of you guys, you can't grow. And the cool thing with Jackie, and this is why we're always together, is she protects me. Because if I'm sliding back into an old routine, she's like, no, no, I know that guy. I don't like him. You don't like him. He can't come out. Because even though, this is where you got to be very aware until you die. Self-awareness is what leaders are. Yeah, he never really dies. She never really dies. They're always lurking in the mirror saying, come on, man. Come on, back. dude, you're good now. Remember this. Every day, we recreate until we die. That's the goal. So that's what I want with you guys today. Today, we're going to talk about an array of topics. Um, I'm a big family guy. I'm a big team guy. Without my team, Elliot Army wouldn't exist. You guys wouldn't be here if it was just Andy Elliot. There's a reason why, and I want to say this to you. There's a reason why we blew up. We built a team. The power's in the team. The power's in, I want just everybody, if you ever want to do anything big in your life, you're going to need to build a team. And not, not a company, not to make money, a family, a chosen family, a group of people, a cult, sure, yeah. of people that are on the same mission as you. And you do life together. Let's go. Let's start training. Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Thank you. Thank you. Dude, we love you, bro. Hey, everybody. What's going on? Yeah. I love this little, in, I say little, this little room that's packed in 500 people. How cool is that? Most people talk about wanting more out of life. Most people, I rode here with my, my daughter's boyfriend who's in the, in the audience here right now, and he just had a great football game the other night, and we were talking about someone who scored the winning touchdown two games in a row, and he's doing fantastic. I said, he's probably walking down the halls of high school like with his feet an inch off the ground, isn't he? He said, two feet off the ground, right? <laughs> Two games in a row, this kid caught a, a touchdown pass in the end zone to win when they were losing. How cool is that, right? I said, but here's the thing in life. Everybody, everybody wants to catch the winning ball, don't they? Everyone wants to go to school with their feet two foot off the ground saying, I did it. But most of the world is not willing to do the shit you have to do and the sacrifices and the discipline to get the win. Is that true? Yeah. So what's cool about an audience like this, before we know each other, we come from different backgrounds, maybe different religions, different economics, but this room is easy for me to fall in love with, to have a conversation with, because I know one thing we all have in common, and you can let me know by a hand raise. Do we all know without a shadow of a doubt that all of us are meant for more? Raise your hand if you know you're meant for more. Give a shout if you're meant for more. Well, here's the thing. Most people raise their hand and say, 
I'm meant for more. But most people aren't willing to cut a check, get in a plane, be in convenience, sit in a room, and spend a day gaining new capabilities. You are, and for that, it's an honor to be here with you guys. Because, thank you. So, and, and I don't think there could be a better time in history to be here. The world's pretty screwed up. Can we agree yeah. that stuff's a little crazy out there? I mean, I'm 55. I've never seen it so on the edge of craziness. And when times get crazy on the outside, if you don't master the inner game, if you don't connect yourself with a tribe, if you're not growing, like Andy said, I got the chance to watch him for the last 45 minutes. If you're not growing, if you're not working on your own personal development, if you're not gaining new skills, if you're not innovating, if you're not scared on a daily basis, this is a time where the outside world could give you just enough uncertainty to say, let's see how it goes. I just want to tell you, because I've been in business since I was 17, I started cutting firewood. I've never worked for anybody else in my entire life. I lived in a trailer park as a kid, had that whole journey. I'll share a little bit more of that in a second. But I've never, ever, in all of those years, seen anybody win by waiting for a certain time. This is the time. This is the time where you can thrive or be left behind. This is the time you can focus on innovation, take uncomfortable action, jump out of the plane, grow wings on the way down, gain skills, gain capabilities, and literally set yourself apart. In five years, you could set yourself apart for a lifetime. But most will wait. So I want to commend you again for being in this room because most people see problems. And if you could see solutions, most people see obstacles. If you could see opportunity, most people focus on what they lost rather than what they have. And as subtle as that sounds, they are the foundational pieces for true success. So we need to find a way to create on an ongoing basis, on a regular basis, how do we create a map that allows us to give us our true north? And that's what I want to share today. I want to go through. You guys up for an exercise? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's look at this through the lens of business. Can you see the red all right? I don't know. Can you guys see it all the way in the back or you see it on the screen? So it says, where are you? Think of it like GPS. If we have a destination to get to, we need the starting point, right? And if you look through the lens of all change, Hear me on this one. If you're nothing else about this part, hear this one. All change starts with being honest with yourself. Change doesn't happen until you're honest. You're in this room for a reason. Whether that's moving away from the thing we said earlier that's painful or wanting to move towards something that's bigger. And if you really are honest with yourself, I love what Andy was saying is like the gaps. Like when you're really honest, I'm here because I'm doing well financially, but I'm dead on the inside, or I'm doing things just for the money and I find no purpose in what I do, or I'm not making the money I want to make. My friends think I'm doing better than I am and I'm not. It's okay because I remember years ago listening to Tony and I remember him saying when a rocket goes off the ground, gets off the ground, right? The majority of the energy of the rocket is the first 10 feet. So what I want to share with you guys, the reason you want to get disturbed within action, you want to poke the bear, you want to remind yourself of the pain, because getting the rocket to your next level, so many of you are doing amazing. You look amazing, you're in this room, you cut a check to be here, you flew here. It's more than 99% of the world could do. But going to that next level can be scary. It's new capabilities, new skills. How do I do it? What if I fail? To get the rocket off the ground, sometimes we got to go to the dark side. So looking through the lens of business, where are you? The next one is where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? I mean, physically, right? I'm not driving in a car. And we hope life goes on a 45 degree angle, right? We hope we're growing. So where is it that you want to go? I say this because most people without realizing, and I think it's a default mechanism in our brains, 
most of us focus on what we don't want and don't even realize it. I did this exercise for years. I had an event where I did, I did an event in Las Vegas once a month for almost a decade. And I would pull people up on stage and I'd put two chairs with two whiteboards. So I had a chair here and a chair here and I'd sit them in this chair and I'd say, tell me what you don't want out of life. Man, it comes like a, like 99.9% .9 of the time, I don't want this job I'm in, or I don't, want my, I don't want my significant other to question everything I do. I don't want to commute anymore. I don't want to miss my kids' games. Like, don't, 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 don't. Like, it's where I couldn't write. I would write so fast, it would just get sloppy. And I'd say, okay, stop. And I'd say, come on, let's go to this chair. And I'd put him in this chair. And I'd say, okay, tell me what you want out of life. And most of the time, people would stall. And they would say things like, wow, that's a great question. Or give me a minute. Or they'd say, what do I want? I want to not have the same boss. I'm like, no, 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 that's what you don't want. We did that in that chair. And it just made me realize without understanding it that I think our subconscious truly wants to avoid the pitfalls. I get that. But if we don't have a compelling future, if we don't know what we're pointing at, how do you ever get there? If you're in GPS and you go, I just want to drive from, to Florida from here. Well, great, you just can't start driving. You need a destination so you can focus your energy, your car, and everything you do to get to that destination. True? Yes. Is that true? True. Yes. Right, so without saying it, literally, if you and I got caught in an elevator today and I said, hey man, where do you want to go? What's your goal in a year from now? I don't need the answer now, but do you have it clearly defined? Because fuzzy targets do not get hit. You know, I'm going pretty quick here. You could take this on the plane ride home and say, it's a year from now. It's the best year of my life. And just start writing down everything. You'll be amazed on how much of that will come true. Make sense? Yeah. Two parts of the map. Where are you? Where do you want to go? The next part is why. This is the one that changed my, heart, my life because it starts with your heart. No change ever happens without attaching an emotion. You hear me on that one? No change happens without attaching an emotion. On this journey of where you are to where you want to be, you're gaining new skills, gaining new capabilities. Is it going to be a rocky road? Are you going to have disappointment? You're going to have failures. You're going to have insane wins. Learn from other people. Be mentored. All the stuff. People in your family, like my sister, acting like I was on drugs with, a, with a, you know, an intervention. All of those things are going to happen. I want to tell you, a compelling future alone is not enough. You got to get into your soul. You got to get into your heart. I did an exercise once. I won't go too deep on it, but I did an exercise once called the Seven Levels Deep from a guy you hired to, to coach me two decades ago, 18 years ago. And he called it the Seven Levels Deep. And he said to me, we talked about where I was with my company, where I wanted to go. And he said... Well, why do you want it? And I think the first couple of answers, and it taught me why seven times, you ask the question over and over. I think the first one I said is, I want to step up the standards of this industry. And that was from my head, Bo, I want to step up the standards, right? And he said, oh, that's great, Dean. Why is that important to you? I'm like, I think I want to leave a legacy for my family. I said, I want to leave a legacy. Man, I'm on fire with all this shit just coming out of my head. But this guy was good. I'm still friends with him. Joe Stump, he's a great guy. He asked me, seven levels deep, really just asking me seven times why that previous thing was important to me. And he knew it when I got to about the fifth time. I don't even know what I said the third and fourth time, but the fifth time, I said, I never want to go backwards. I was like, ooh, that's different. I hired this guy to help me in my business. Now I'm like, I got tears in my eyes thinking about struggling as a kid and not having money. I'm like, I don't want to go back there. I don't want to like go to Motel 6 anymore and watch my parents struggle. Like, and I started feeling like emotional. I'm like, I'm not going back there. I'm like, dude, you're amazing. This I never said those words out loud. He goes, that was only number five. I'm like, oh shit. All right. <laughs> so he's like, why don't you want to go backwards? And I couldn't think of it right away. And then I said, I want my kids to have choices. I'm not talking about entitled kids. There's plenty of those. I don't want to contribute more of those. But I want them to have choices that maybe I didn't have as a kid. And I start thinking of my, who's a parent? Raise your hand if you're a parent, right? When you start thinking about your kids through that lens, you can't help but like tears coming out of my face. Like, I'm so good. Yes, do it for them. Choices, right? 
And I thought I was done. He's like, I'm sorry, it's number six. And he said to me, why do you want your kids to have choices? And I said, it just popped out of my mouth. I said, I need to be in control. And I don't mean a control freak. And in that moment, literally my life changed in that moment because I started thinking my parents were married nine times by the time I was 20. Really good at getting married. Way better at getting divorced, right? Um, I moved 20 times by the time I was 19. So you've got to understand, I'd have new step-parents, step-grandparents, step-brothers, step-sisters. I'd be like, this is amazing. Leo Rizzo, step-dad, step-dad of the year, step-grandpa of the year, I should say. Took me hunting, took me fishing, come home one day, no more Leo Rizzo. Like, and I realized in that moment, all those things that I was never in control as a child. And at this phase of my life, I would die before someone would tell me what to do with my time. I have four kids from two to almost 18. Imagine that, the whole spectrum. I don't miss baseball, softball. I don't miss football. I don't miss jujitsu. I don't miss dance. There's nobody that's ever gonna say, oh, sorry, you can't go to your daughter's dance recital today. I'm sorry, yeah, we gotta finish this thing. You need to stay here. I would die first. I would crawl across broken glass. I would chew through a brick wall. And at that moment, I realized as a kid, my parents were in control. And I realized the reason I had been working so hard my whole life is I want to own my calendar. Who in here wants to own their calendar, their time, 100% of the time, right? So for me, that might not be yours, but that was mine. When I realized my why was I'm never going backwards, my kids are going to have choices, and I'm going to be in control of my time. I want to do what I want, when I want to do it. I want to start the new business I want to do. I want to raise my kids the way I want to raise them. I want to live the way I want to live. And when I decided that, it is my default that along this journey, when self-doubt pops in, when imposter syndrome pops in, right? remember this, new level, new devil. It's never going to end. Every time you go to another level, there's going to be a new devil that you got to beat. And if you don't have the wherewithal, if you don't have a why anchored into your soul, you will quit at one of those levels. Ah, oh, this is too much. I got to replace myself. I got to hire a CEO and a CTO. And I don't even know what all these C's. But do I even name it? Oh my God, should I just keep the money? All those things will scare you at every level until you dig into your soul and go, no, no, no. I'm not going backwards. My kids are going to have choices. I'm going to be in control. Let's freaking do this. Do you understand how you have to attach an emotion? Yes. All right. Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. So super important. My buddy, a good friend of mine, a good friend of mine, a buddy, somebody that helps me, uh, you know, with discipline, staying, you know, uh, challenging ourselves to be great. I, I like athletes. This is my adult sport. Business is my adult sport. You guys are all out of high school in here. You guys aren't in college. No one's in here is a professional athlete. Your business is your, your sport now. Your family's your sport. Those are things you take real serious. Well, I love a guy that's competitive with God, who's had it all and literally found a different way to live. And I'm gonna let him, and I'm gonna tell you this, dude, in this next hour, this next hour, this guy's gonna talk, and then me and Jackie will finish it out all the way until we're done today. This guy's gonna change your life. And it won't be through him, it'll be through him, but it'll be with God. And if you don't believe in God in this room right now, you will in a minute. And I won't ruin it for him, but I'm gonna tell you this. This is a buddy that helps me build my relationship with God and get closer. And if you listen to me, God can slay every giant in your life. You don't even have to do it on your own. The, the most successful people know how to operate in peace. And God provides peace. It's a secret. Sometimes it's the last thing we choose, right? But I think that needs to change. You know what I mean? We go to him when we're screwed, right? What if we went to him when we weren't screwed? We'd never get screwed. Okay? So anyways, he's our father. We're his kids. We're made to be strong. Guy Steve Weatherford, he'll tell you who he has played in the NFL. He's a savage. When you see him, he's built like an animal. He's a killer. He wants everything that you want, 
but I love studying people that live differently, and he inspires me to be a better man. Guys, give it up for Steve Weatherford. Let's go, Steve. Come on, baby. Woo! Love you, man. All right, who's ready to change your life? Yeah! 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 Town wins. Well, the point is, guys, we've come from all over the place, right? And I believe every single one of us, we're looking for our next level. Right? We're looking for our next level of mindset. We're looking for our next level of marriage. We're looking for our next level of business. And I have one hour with you today. And I also want to thank the Elliott Army. Man, every single time that I come back here, guys, you make me feel loved. You make me feel welcomed. Um, this is beginning to feel like home. This is the third time that I've been back to the Lions Den. And every single time that I come here, guys, I feel like God increases my faith of like what he's willing to do when people want their next level. But I believe that a lot of our next level, men, and I know this because, you know, kind of like what Andy said, and I'll share a little bit of my resume with you of what it says on Wikipedia. But what I've learned in these later years in life, I'm 41 years old. And what I've learned in maybe these last five or six years where I feel like God has really grown me in areas that I was, I was a rookie in. A lot of times, men and women, our next level is unlocked, not by something that we learn or something that we like, we, we master, a lot of my next levels have been unlocked by things that I stopped doing, right? So I'm believing that God will help to help you identify what are some of the things that I'm, that's a really loud uh, text message alarm. Uh, <laughs> pray that God, somebody's getting an alert from God right now. <laughs> hey, whatever that message says, listen. <laughs> but there's things that, that, that you guys are carrying around. I believe that there's things that we're doing and I was in that same boat. Man, like, I'm so thankful for the way that Andy introduced me, that I'm a man that helps him to get closer to God, a, a man that lives a different type of way. But if you would have met me six years ago, seven years ago, you wouldn't feel that way about me. Sure, my Instagram might be showing you, oh, great husband and great father, great entrepreneur, Super Bowl champion. But nobody really knew what was going on below the surface, including my wife. And to be honest with you, because I had never really gone into it, I didn't really know what was going on in my life. I want to show you guys a picture. Pop that picture up of my family, would you? There we go. This is the Weatherfords. So this is, thank you. You guys can do a Taylor, that's a Taylor Swift clap. And that's about the only time I'll let you do that today. The rest of the time, it's two clap. Two clap! But if you want a Taylor Swift for clap for my family or for God, I'll be all right with that. But this is my family. I've got six children. Uh, my wife and I, I met her when I was on my official visit to the University of Illinois. I was getting recruited and she was a freshman there. I met her the first night that I was on campus and I knew that she would be mine. <laughs> and it's awesome because look what God has given us. I've got six kids, my oldest son. You're going to hear a lot about him here today. My best friend, my daughter, she's 14. I've got another one that's 12. I've got another one that's nine. I've got another one that's six. And then my youngest, my youngest is Kingston. Uh, my son that I'm holding, and I'm, I'm proud of him. He's three years old, but about three years ago when he was born, he was the biggest baby born in the hospital that he was born in in the entire year of 2020. He was 12 pounds and three ounces. Let's go! And it's awesome to get up here and flex my genetics, but at the end of the day, my wife bore that kid. <laughs> My wife, we edited it up the other day. See, there's a mom right there. I bless you. I honor you, Jackie. I love you. I honor you. I have no idea what it's like to live in your shoes. You should be up here teaching this class. But I'm thankful that I have the mic right now. I edited it up the other day. My wife has had 61.5 pounds of kids. Unbelievable. So if you want to talk about a pro, she's a pro, man. So my, my Wikipedia says that I played in the NFL for 10 years, that I was a Super Bowl champion, that I was twice named the fittest man in the NFL, that I was given the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, given to the, the NFL's most philanthropic man. And, and that's what you'll read about me on the internet. That's what I would have told you six, seven, eight years ago on Instagram. But one thing that I didn't tell anybody about, put up the next picture of the Airbnb, would you? So that picture right there is a, it's a picture of a Craigslist ad. And that family that I just showed you about seven years ago, 
because I was so broken, because my identity was so lost in the world and I was so darkened to depression and addiction, that's where I lived for seven days. I sat my five, I had five kids at the time, I sat my five kids down and my wife down and I said, kids, your mom doesn't love me anymore and so we're getting separated and I'm moving out. I pray that divorce never happens to any of you. I was this close. I, was, I had every single thing that the world had to offer. People knew my name. I was on the cover of fitness magazine covers. Millions of dollars. Tons of clout on the internet. People like Andy Elliott and Lewis Howes and Ed Milet and John Gordon and Odell Beckham Jr. and Eli Manning, Drew Brees, they're all my friends. I have everything, I, I had everything that everybody in this room wants. And I believe that God, the reason that God sent me here today, because I'm only going to be in Arizona for seven hours. And the only reason that I came here is you. The only reason that I came here is you, Adam. It's you, Pascal. You drove all this way. You flew all this way. <laughs> You're right. You, you, you didn't drive over the ocean. But I want you to know that if you were the only person that were sitting in this room, you would get the same version of me. Because I know what it's like to want your next level. I know what it's like to want to get into rooms and get unlocked. And I've tried every single thing in personal development that you could ever try. Psychology, psychiatry, medication, self-medication, achievement, women, gambling. The list can go on and on. You can take that picture down. One of my friends, Dylan Pollard, said last, the first time that I came here, he said, I feel like God's speaking to me and I feel like what's gonna happen in this room is people are going to excavate before they elevate. And I feel like that just goes right along with, with what I was just sharing with you. I believe that, that every single one of you carried something into this room that God didn't design you to carry, but you're gonna need to dig deep. Today, you're going to need to forget about the person to your right and your left. I know it's a great thing to, to build community and meet friends. But I want you to close, I want everybody to close their eyes right now. Because I'm going to ask you to take three steps today, and I believe that God is going to give you three gifts. I believe that you can have enough courage to release some things that don't belong to you to receive something that you could never earn, and then to commit to something bigger than yourself. I want everybody to open their eyes and say, one, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, this is Sunday. We're going to church. You're going to have to bring the volume up a little bit. Everybody stand up. Wow. Say it with your chest. If you want your life to change, if you want to get something you've never gotten, men and women, you have to do things that you've never done. This room's about to get a whole lot hotter. And not because my volume is rising. Because you're going to begin to take action that you didn't take before. So say it with your chest. One, two, three. Go. One, two, three. Woo! I'm in the right spot. Now, you're going to repeat what I repeat in those three steps that we take. When you release things that don't belong to you, like guilt, shame, addiction, suicidal thoughts, lust, porn. I know it's all in this room. We're going to release those things. Because if you keep doing those things, you're going to get the same result. If you want to get what you've never gotten, you have to do some things that you've never done. So I want you to say, release, receive, commit. I'll say it one more time, because when you say it, I want you thinking. I want it to come from a deep place. I want it to come from a place that when you go back to your family and you go back to your business, everything is different. Not because of you, because you are willing to surrender something over that didn't belong to you. Now I'll say it again. It's release, receive, commit. One, two, three, go. Release, release receive, receive commit. commit. One more time. Release, release receive, receive, commit. Keep standing on your feet. Those are the three steps that we're going to take. I'll say it again because I want it to be tattooed on your heart. Receive, release, receive, commit. And in those three steps, when you release things that don't belong to you, you're going to be able to receive something, right? It's going to make space. There's going to be an exchange that happens. You're going to get freedom. You're going to get freedom. 
And the second step, when you receive something that you could never earn, you get an identity. And that was my biggest problem, men and women. I didn't know who I was. And so I continued to look for things outside of myself, cars, clothes, friends, achievements, money, everything that was outside of myself. And I built up my world. And I was in bondage to all the things that I built up. But when I received the fullness of what God had for me, I stepped into a new identity that wasn't mine. So you're going to get freedom, you're going to get identity, and then you're going to get something that eluded me for 36 years of my life, and I'm 41 now. Five years, seven months, I've been walking in authority. Right? That means that what I encounter because of the relationship that I have, I'm more than an overcomer, but I'm definitely an overcomer. Sorry if you guys keep getting spit on because it's going to keep happening. I did not come here with persuasive words. I came here for a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit and nothing else. So again, I want you guys to say release, receive, commit. We're going to sweat a lot here today, baby. I got a glisten going already and I haven't even prayed. Release, receive, commit. Let's go. Ready? One, two, three. Release, Release, receive, receive, commit. commit. One more time. Release, Release, receive, receive, commit. commit. Sit down. And so I believe that I'm here that you could release things. I'm here to place my hands to what it is that you want to give up. So I had a guy put his hand on my board and prayed a really simple prayer that we're going to pray right now. Not a prayer of religion, a prayer of relationship. And we're going to go through those three steps that, that you know. You know what you're releasing. You know the trauma that you're releasing. You know the mistakes that you're releasing. I actually want to take 30 seconds. I haven't done this before, but I see a lot of you guys writing things down. Could we put on some worship music, maybe the blessing? And for 60 seconds, I want you to privately write down what you're releasing. Nobody's looking. We can actually put the the house lights down. Let's have some permanence to what happens this weekend. Not that we would learn something, that we would experience God and everything would change. What do you need to release? I'm going to help you out, and then I'm going to give you some quiet time to write them down. Then we're going to pray. Is there shame? Is there guilt? Is there depression? What about control? Have you been trying to control things? Put that down. Anxiety. Unforgiveness. It wasn't until I unforgave, and it wasn't until I forgave my abuser that I stepped into freedom. But it wasn't until I received the full forgiveness of Jesus that I could forgive somebody else like that that didn't deserve it. So do you have unforgiveness for other people? Do you have unforgiveness for yourself? What about an addiction? What about suicidal ideations or thoughts? Fear of failure. Like, if you knew that you couldn't fail and the only thing that mattered was God's opinion of you, would you do things different? Write down the fear of failure. Write down the fear of, man, if you've ever let somebody stop you from doing something or saying something that you know is what you need to do, write down the fear of man. If you've ever placed anything above God, write down what it is. Man, if I'm not careful with myself, I can put my ministry above God. If I'm spending more time doing this than I am with my time with God, that can be an idol. Even great things. Your wife could be an idol. Do you spend more time thinking about how you can love or serve her than you do God? Idols. What about divorce? Are there people in here who have experienced divorce and you just keep wearing that like like that's part of who you are? When people used to say ADHD was Steve. No, it's not. I'm a son of God. You are not your divorce. You are not your bankruptcy. You're not your infidelity. Things can change today. Lust. What about perfectionism? Always trying to get it right so maybe you never start. Procrastination. Accepting average. What about the fear of rejection? Some of you guys don't start because you're worried about being rejected. You're more worried about being with the cool guys than you are about doing what God calls you to do. All right, turn that down just a little bit. I want to read a poem with you, and then we're going to pray. And then those of you that are feeling the Spirit of God convict you right now that you know that there's more for you, but you know that you can't get there on your own, and you know that you've made mistakes, I'm praying and believing that every single person in this room would repent of their sins and would receive Jesus. 
And if you pray this prayer with us today and you do it with a repentant heart, a genuine heart, I want you to know that your name is gonna be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. What does that mean, Steve? That means when your body expires, your spirit will go up to a heavenly place, not heaven, but it'll go up to a heavenly place and you'll meet an angel. And that angel will be holding the Lamb's Book of Life. And if you pray the prayer that we're about to pray, your name is gonna get written in that book in Jesus' blood, which means it can never be taken out. I want everybody in this room to know that there's nothing that you have done that will ever separate you from our Father's love. And there's also nothing that you will do from this moment moving forward that would ever make God love you more than he loves you right now. That blows my mind. And there's so many mysteries about God that we have inside of this room. But I don't want to serve a God and die for a God that I can understand with my eight-pound brain. I want to serve an awesome, powerful God, and I do. And I want you to take your time, write this down, your time, your talents, and your treasures. The amount of time that God gives you on this planet the talents that he gave you and only you, and the treasures that he's put in your life, like your family, your friends. God, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for the men and women that are inside of this room, that you chose them. God, we thank you that you already know your na their, their name. God, we thank you that you've placed destiny upon each and every one of them. We just ask that your Holy Spirit would increase in this place, that you would give a Holy Spirit courage and conviction for people that have never raised their hand and prayed this prayer, God, that they would be inspired in their spirit to surrender everything that they have. If you've never given your life to Jesus, every single person's eyes are closed in here but mine. I'm gonna count to three, and I want you to raise your hand and say, that's me. I need less of me, and I need to do it for God. Three, two, one, do it now. Jesus, Jesus. Okay, keep those hands up. If you've prayed that prayer like I did when, you, when I was 11 years old, but you need to rededicate your life. You're like, man, I've been walking around lukewarm. This crazy guy from Dallas, Texas was sent here for a reason, and God, I hear you. I hear you speak to me through him. I want you to raise your hand. Three, two, one, do it now. That's everybody. That's everybody. Don't miss an opportunity for forgiveness, for grace, for identity. Put your hands down now. Now it's time for all of us to take these three steps, to release what doesn't belong to us, to receive the fullness of Jesus, not just the forgiveness, the authority as well, and to commit to something bigger than us. That, mean, that means Jesus, be my Savior, but be my Lord. I'm going to follow you with everything that I have from this moment moving forward, my time, my talents, and my treasures. I want everybody to say this with me. God... I need more of you and less of me. Hey, this is the part where you say it with your chest. I need more of you and less of me. I need more of you and less of me. I proclaim you as king. I proclaim you as king. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I've made mistakes. I've made mistakes. God, I repent of those sins. God, I repent of those sins. I turn away from who I used to be. And I give you everything that I have. And I give you everything that I have. Jesus, I need your forgiveness. Jesus, I need your forgiveness. But I need your authority too. But I need your authority too. So right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. So right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive your authority. I receive your authority. And I want everybody to put your hands up. And I want you to repeat these words after me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I give you permission. I give you permission. From the top of my head to the bottoms of my feet. From the top of my head to the bottoms of my feet. That you would give me joy. That you would give me joy. That you would give me peace. That you would give me peace. That you would give me love that surpasses all understanding. That you would give me love that surpasses all understanding. God, that you would change me. God, that you would change me. I surrender my life. I surrender my life. From this day moving forward. From this day moving forward. I go from amateur to pro. I step into the freedom of Jesus, the identity of Jesus, and the authority of Jesus. God, thank you for changing my business and my family. Because you changed me. It's in Jesus' name that I pray all of these things. Amen. All right, I want everybody to pull their phone out. Andy, come up here, man. If you made a decision for Jesus, 
If you made a decision for Jesus in the lion's den today, I want you to take your phone out and I want you to turn your light on when I count to three. Get up here, man. Hold my hand. Three, two, one. Do it now. Light it up for Jesus. Light it up for Jesus. Come on, man. Every single one of you, your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life in Jesus' blood, which means it can never be taken out. Put your phones down. We're going to pray one more time. Andy, I love you, man. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. God, we praise your name. God, we thank you for each and every one of these men and these women. God, we thank you that their lives are changed, that their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We thank you that generational curses have been broken. Self-limiting beliefs are laying on the ground. God, thank you that men and women are changed here today. We ask that you would bless Andy. God, that you would open up heaven over everything that he, that he does. God, that you would keep his hands righteous, that you would keep his mind right. God, that you continue to heal his heart, that you would bless his family. You would do all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you. Super important, guys. If you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Right? You got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay? Every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. So this whole thing has been a journey for us, for me and Andy, having our company, having our team, having you guys has been something that is just unbelievable and I still have to pinch myself every day just because I have so much gratitude in my heart and every time we have something come up like last night if you guys were here like I was choking up just watching how proud I am of our team you know our kids are running around and we just designed this life but throughout this whole life we had a lot of pain and a lot of things that went went wrong and you guys are all here and you probably look at Andy and you're like oh my gosh he's so awesome or you look at me and I have the young ones asking, how can I find a girl like you? And I'm like, dude, you have no freaking idea how freaking psycho crazy I was and still am. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you've learned a lot so far. Who's learned a lot? Who is ready to leave here today and implement some changes? And if your family's not here, you're ready to show them that you did not make a mistake by being here. So when you do go home, you're going to have a little resistance. If your wife isn't here, for those of you that came as a couple, stand up if you came here with your significant other. I want to see. I want to see. Okay. So everybody, yes, give them a hand because it takes a lot. That's one of the things that, yes, yes, yes. So awesome. Now, I see. You guys can have a seat. Thank you. Now, some, I see a lot of kids here with their parents, too, and it's, such, it's so amazing. It's so amazing that you guys are doing this now. You know, we built this company, like I said, through a lot of pain and a lot of, a lot of fights and a lot of... We didn't have that example growing up. We had to break a lot of generational curses and lies in our heads and listening to Steve Weatherford and his story and all the things that he went through. Man, we're all just broken people, and I was talking to him outside before he came on, and he's like, I just love coming here. And I said, you know why you love coming here? Because we're all so screwed up and we're so ready to change and we're so equipped to change because Jesus did come to the front of the lost. And we're all freaking lost here, aren't we? Yeah. But we're all freaking an army and we're going to go change the world. So it's so awesome. Thank you so much for being here. From the bottom of my heart, I really mean it. And this is our dream. We're going to help you find your dream. And I'm going to talk to you guys about some things, like I said, that are important to me. So first off, I'm going to talk to you about the biggest lessons I've learned in marriage. Okay. Now you look at me and Andy, we've been together for 18 years. 18 years. So you guys have probably been together longer than that, huh? 50? 50 years. Give it up for 50 years. Wow. That's great. So we've been together for 18 years. And in those 18 years, we started having a lot of problems. We started basically wanted to kill each other. He mentioned that I was an alpha. I still consider myself an alpha. 
There's a lot of misconceptions about alpha women, by the way, okay? Because I am an alpha and I was, and I really had the bad side of being an alpha when we first got together because I believed I did not need a man in order to make it in life. I had my own life, I had my own job, I had my own career, I had my own stuff. I did not need a man to take care of me or anything. So I didn't have, I didn't have one ounce of tolerance for anybody, right? Then we learned to grow together and I learned that I needed to drop my ego in order to grow, right, with him. So there's a lot of big lessons that we had to learn in that. But as alpha women, we still want a man to lead. We still want a man that we can look up to. We still want a man that actually makes choices. As an alpha woman, I would have been like, oh, I, I can do whatever I want with him. I'm, he's like my little puppet and all that. I would have gotten sick, sick of him. It's just the truth. So if you're that man that is just basically that way and your wife doesn't respect you, it's time for you to make some choices and really lead and be proud of yourself. Okay? So some of the lessons that I want to talk to you about, the guys about, a lot of these are controversial, okay? You don't really make sense, but I'm going to explain because that's the way we are. We're extremists, okay? If you don't fight, there's no true intimacy. Now, you guys have been together for 50 years, right? We believe that you should fight. If you don't fight, there's no true intimacy. You need to fight, but there are some rules to fighting. You don't fight for personal victory. You fight for resolution. You don't get historical. Write this down. If someone wins, no one wins. If you're not fighting your marriage, I know so many people, so many people, family included, mentors of mine in my family, not mentors like my mom and dad, but I had aunts and uncles that were married for such a long, long time. They went through their whole life. And we're like, man, they have the per we used to spend Christmases. We used to spend Thanksgiving. They had the big celebrations at their house. Kids got out of high school, and then they got divorced. Like, why did this happen? And we, I wanted to be like you. Why? They never fought. They didn't understand what ticked them off or not. It's death by a thousand paper cuts. It's an unresolved issues that they had. They didn't really know each other. It was a business relationship. It wasn't, it wasn't a marriage. It was just a contract. It wasn't relational anymore. So sometimes you need a fight, but you need to understand that you have to have those rules to fighting. Fighting is not a bad thing if you do it right. If you try to win, you're only gonna wanna win, or you're only gonna win, have the last word for 30 seconds, and you're gonna feel like shit, okay? Some of you guys are gonna leave, and you're gonna start fighting. Ugh, sorry. But you're gonna fight, and you're gonna make up really nicely, okay? Okay, next one. If your spouse isn't included in your vision of success, they'll fight you every step of the way. One of the things that people ask me all the time, how do I get my wife to support me the way you support Andy? How do I get my wife to be driven? How do I get my wife to not just want to talk about the kids? How do I get my wife to... Be interested in my business. I can't do this. I'm like, well, what is it that you're bringing home to your wife? What is it that you're talking about when you get home? Are you more interested in pleasing your clients or kissing your boss's ass? I mean, honestly, that happens a lot. Is she excited to see you when you get home? Are you just as excited to see her? When you get home, do you run to the kids? And you're like, oh my gosh, Emily, I missed you. You throw her up in the air. And then your wife, you're like, hey, babe, what's for dinner? It happens. You are going to have to dream together. I do not care if your wife works with you or not. It is not that important. Andy and I work together now. But we became marriage millionaires before we worked together. We became marriage millionaires before we made a dime. We believed in dreaming together and holding each other accountable. And he's given you many, many, many little stories on how I held him accountable and how I told him that he was going to keep his word. But it took a lot of work to get that way. It took him wanting to change. It took him changing his eyes and being like, you know what? I need you. Your wife, your husband wants to feel like you need them. Yes, if you think about it, Andy doesn't need me 
to be successful. I don't need Andy to be successful, right? He's like, okay, technically we can take care of ourselves. We would have been okay without each other, whatever. You can, you can think whatever you want. If he doesn't feel like I need him, he will not perform at his best. And if I don't feel like he needs me, I won't either. Your spouse needs to feel like they're a part of that picture. You need to define what success looks like to you. Most of the times I ask people, what do you want to do? What is your goal? What does success look like to you? They don't even know how to answer that. They don't know what it is. Oh, I want to make money because I want to have choices and all these different things. That's great. What does that mean to your family? What does that mean to your wife? How are they included in that vision? In anything that you do, in business and in family, if your wife, your team member, your, your employees, if they don't feel like they're a part of that vision of what success looks like for you, your core values, whatever you're trying to accomplish, if the person you're doing life with is not included in that vision, it will not work. Everybody in society out there is telling you, hey, you know what? Family and business can't mix. Oh, your wife is telling you, oh, you're not here all the time. All you do is talk about work. And at work, they're telling you, work your ass off so you can give your wife the life that she wants. But they, don't, they tell you to leave her at home and don't talk to her about anything. They're telling you that you need to separate things because it doesn't work. No, listen, you can do it. You need to do it both at the same time. Because if you don't, it's very short-lived. If you do not include your spouse, in that vision, you will be stuck later trying to find purpose and you're gonna have money in the bank and you will be depressed. Right here, the last one. The best leaders are the best students and support their team to do the same. Why do we say that? Andy and I spend a lot of money on self-development and training and this is why we are able to have our events and this is why we do. We believe in training and growing so much and you do too, and that's why you're here. But if you're not constantly learning, we tell our team all the time, we want you guys to be better than us. We want you guys to be better than us. If we're reading a book, we tell them, hey, read this book. You gotta go do this. If we go take a training, we went to, uh, to Patrick Bet David's event, we brought our team with us. We want them to study what we're studying. But we're also learning so freaking fast that it's so hard for them to keep up because we're the leaders. They try, and we want them to. And they're learning, 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 learning. But freaking Andy and I, we are freaking obsessed with freaking learning. We work so hard. But our team is right there, catching, catching. And because they're going this fast, it's inspiring us as leaders at, to go hard, harder and harder and harder. But we still got to make sure we're here. If you stop learning and stop training and stop investing yourself and quit reading books and you just look at everything and take life casually, your team members are going to pass you up. Your employees are going to pass you up. They're going to look for somebody else. If you really want to be that leader, you're going to have to keep reading books, listening to podcasts, growing all the time, and inspiring your team to do the same so you can hold each other accountable. There's nothing better. You won't be able to take over the world if you don't do it that way. And then you're going to be around a bunch of people you don't like. You're going to have to inspire them to want to learn, but you're going to have to be mentally sharp and sharpening that pencil every single day, reading, reading, reading. It's freaking exhausting. I dare our team to study as much as we, we do, <laughs> but they study really, really hard. I can't tell you. So those are some of the things that I wanted to go over, some of the lessons that we've learned in leadership, in parenting, in marriage that have really helped us and that really had helped us stay sharp and continue to grow, keeping that newness and keeping to prove to ourselves and our team that we deserve to be where we are. Because if we don't do that every single day, then we wouldn't be where we are right now. Nothing gets old if you keep pouring into it. You, the water, you keep watering the plant, it continues to grow in everything. So thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate the time. I really appreciate the attention. And we're gonna go kick some ass together. Hey guys, looks like you made it to the end of the video. You're the true point zero 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 one percenters. Look, I know one percenters, it can make it halfway through the video, but making it all the way through, you guys are the best. Now, here's what I'd like to do. Number one, I wanna get closer to you. The fact that you made it all the way through the video, you're like, man, dude, I wanna roll with this guy. Okay, so I need to connect with you. Down below, there's a description box on this YouTube video. There's a link, it says coach with me one-on-one. -on -one. 
okay? If you'll go and you'll enter your information, I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. You can tell me what you need help with, what your goals are, and we will crush it together. I would love to help you guys go to the next level in life. You can tell I'm changing my life really fast, and I know that you guys want the same thing. I'd love to go with you on that journey. So right now, if you'd like to partner with me, team with me, if you want me to help coach you and push you, everybody needs a coach, a higher level of accountability to go to the next level. Go to the description box below, click on the link, fill out your information. I'll talk to you in the next 24 hours. Let's kill it.